Okay, we just got done watching DreamWorks Dragon's Gift of the Night Fury. Which came out after the first movie. Yeah. And before uh, Riders of Burke. So, there's some confusions toward the beginning of the movie you had. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize it would come out bef after the first movie, so that's kind of... Um, Meat Lug was still thought to be a guy at this point in time. I had forgotten that detail. It wasn't until this that they realized Meat Lug was a girl. Didn't realize that. Um. Yeah. This also explains where he starts the uh, little rope belt doodad. Rope belt doodad? Yeah, at the end. This is where it comes in. What do you mean? Well, it wasn't in the first movie, but it was in the uh, first season series, so. Hmm. This is where it came in. But, overall... It was also the first time he tried the uh, walking across the sea bridge trick. Oh, yeah, that's right, yeah. So. I was hoping you would catch that, yeah. Except he didn't really walk over it. Yeah, he kind of, yeah. Flew. And Tooth was kind of almost fell. Yeah. But they kind of fixed that when he uh, created that tail. He kind of learned some new technology. Let's take a moment to point out those gears, man. Yeah. Those are some pretty sick gears for a Viking. Yeah. So. You do realize this is on YouTube. <laughs> You're not funny. You're not funny. No, Hiccup and Tooth looks so funny. <laughs> Adorable funny. That was so cute. The yeah. helmet full of saliva. <laughs> <laughs> and now we, now we know why Hiccup doesn't wear it in the yeah. series. Because that doesn't wash out, you know. Yeah, and he also doesn't want to lose his helmet again. Yeah. But it was kind of cute that's only because it's just the first instance Hiccup hugged Toothless, and Toothless was so confused. He's like, this is great, but I don't know what to do. <laughs> Well, that's really a primate way of affection. and Yeah, and he's never experienced that before, so he's a yeah. little unsure. But overall, this is great. Uh, short summary. Uh, the people of Burke are getting ready for their winter holiday called Snoggletog. Which is kind of... Any history? Did Vikings celebrate winter holiday? They did. Yule. And a few others. Um, snoggle Tog is a very invented thing, but it's kind of a combination of a few things. Um, I want to point out Astrid's attempt to make eggnog. <laughs> she was about halfway there. She should have beaten her eggs a bit more. Because she had whole eggs floating in yak cream. Yeah. She should have whisked it all together. Then she would have had some very good yak nog. <laughs> yeah, but... Uh, as the plot moves forward a little yeah. bit, uh, all of the dragons on Burke migrate yeah. off with a larger f flock, I guess we could call them, a, a larger flock of dragons that are passing over Burke. To another island. Yeah. To a more tropical island mm -hmm. that had active volcanoes. Or at least volcanic activity. Yeah, it was probably a hot spot island. Like, Especially it had a sunken crater, so it was once a volcano. Yeah. But and that's all we really knew. All we knew and all the characters knew were that the dragon is just up and left. Mm-hmm. They have babies. Yes. And uh Fish Legs being the uh um, clingy, clingy, yeah, clingy, clingy Viking that he over emotional big baby. Yeah, he's not even a Viking. Yeah, think of more of a Viking. Only uh, because he's the son of a chief. But yeah, he try. Uh, anyways, um, he tries to keep me luck. Mm -hmm. Fish likes does not hiccup. Yeah, so hiccup gets suspicious when he sees a large basket of fish. Yeah. And sneaking around. So... 
meat lug escapes. They discover meat lug's girl had some laid Egg. some eggs, and they distributed the eggs, and they all exploded. Mm -hmm. um, and Astrid had a very um, <laughs> traumatic experience, and she just stood there wide-eyed in like complete horror and shock. The eggs explode. It was really a what have I done moment. Oh, oh, black back to hiccup in the first movie. <laughs> yeah, really. Uh, before that, we hiccup gets in the way of meat log when she escapes and gets carried off with. Her. Hiccup, where are you going? I have no idea. Now you get the the callback I was talking about and yep. uh, Iron Gronkle. Yep. But it was good. I can't think of anything wrong with it, really. No, it was adorable. It was a good Christmas special. It explained some things. It brought in some things. It had adorable babies that yeah. we never see again. Uh, we got to see four kinds of babies. Baby Gronkles, Baby Monsters Nightmares, Zipplebacks, and Baby Deadly Natters. Oh, that's so cute. I want one. Gronkles are cute because they're pudgy. Mm -hmm. They look kind of like pug dog puppies. Yes. The baby natters look like little birds. Monsters and Nightmares were cute too. The Zipplebacks. Large eyes. Fat little necks. Yeah. So cute. Uh, when I first saw the cover, I thought we would finally get to see Baby Night Fury. And I'm like, <gasps> But no. There is no female. Yes. For Toothless. Unfortunately. Yet. They have to put one in at some point. They or a compatible other. Yeah. Because if there's no other Night Furies, then he needs a compatible mate. Mm hmm. Which might end up being a Skrill if that Skrill is female. Or they find a different Skrill. Or a different Skrill. Or a different. Strike class dragon. Yeah. Because I don't think it's been shown that these dragons can uh, crossbreed very well, if at all. Because we don't see any hybrids. No. But there's got to be hybrids. I mean, it happens in nature. Yeah. Uh, even Why do you think there's so many different varieties of birds? Even humans, actually. Humans, too. Uh, Cats. Oh, no. Crossbred. Uh, dogs. Look at all the breeds of dogs. I mean, what happens when you cross a, a husky and a corgi? It's so cute. Uh, going back to the human things, uh, humans were, uh, modern homo sapiens, were just compatible enough to successfully interbreed with our Neanderthal relatives. Mm -hmm. And that's where we get the red and brown, the red and blonde hair mm -hmm. and the blue eyes. Mm -hmm. Because previously, uh, most Homo sapiens were like me, dark hair, dark eyes. Because we came out of Africa uh, mm -hmm. several million years or thousands of years after our Neanderthal relatives did. Yep. So, that's where we get those hair color. Now, blonde's more dominant than dark. Yeah. But that's because we've um, cast out the Neanderthal. Yeah. So now blonde is the dominant of the sapien, as well as brown eyes. Brown eyes will always be dominant, mm -hmm. um, because that's a shared allele between the two, um, and the dominant at that. Blue eyes are also dominant, but it has to exist in both. So, Parent. Yeah. Which is my case. Both my parents have blue eyes, so I have blue eyes, and so do my siblings. But back on track, off the science a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, even in uh, the uh, third episode of Riders of Burke, we saw a terrible terror egg explode. This is where we get the idea from. Of course, the ter terrible terror egg exploding was not as violent as a Gronkle. <laughs> Gronkles have some lava in their eggs, apparently. Or superheated amniotic fat or something. Yeah, something, which explains why... Uh, I guess that was meat lug dumped them into the water. Well, another bronco. Yeah. But, but yeah. So the moral of the story is 
If you find dragon eggs, don't put them in your house. Uh huh. Because it will turn really hot. As we've seen by other dragon series, they all explode. I mean, Aragon's egg exploded. In a way, it just went. Yeah, but it still kind of exploded. There was um, no lava. I don't know what Game of Thrones eggs do, but neither do I. They have some serious shrapnel going on there with their uh, aesthetic design. So I'd hate to see if them explode because you would be viscerated. Yeah. Gotta love having shrapnel run through your internal organs. Ask him if you want to experience that for some reason. Find a grenade. Yeah. It's egg shaped. Or, 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 Tony Stark. Ha! <laughs> the irony of that. Just, you make me he terrible. looking at a missile with his name on it. Literally. <laughs> but anyways. I do, I did like to look into the dragon biology. Because up to this point, we didn't know that much. We knew they flew around, breathed fire, and ate fish. You do realize, though, that at some point, these dragons ran off with mates. Somebody had to have noticed. Unless they were, they, like, mated on Earth. Yeah, I mean, no one's watching their dragons all the time. Maybe they do it at night. Fish legs would be watching Meat Lug all the time. That's right, yeah. So how did Meat Lug... And Astrid would probably notice if Stormfly trapped off. So, and if Snotlap was at all aware of Hookfang, he'd be like, "Yeah!" <laughs> so then we, he, everybody would know about it then. <laughs> yeah, and um, the twins are just oblivious to Barf and Belch. Barf and Belch are oblivious to the twins. So yeah, they wouldn't notice, but. I think Barf and Belch are kind of too stupid to know how that works. Maybe. Yeah. Although the baby little back were cute. Yeah. But yeah, now that you bring that up, yeah, looking at it now. <laughs> this is how they bring in babies but not talk about it. The, yeah. the act. They're not talking about it. They refuse to talk about it. <laughs> They could talk about babies all they want, but it doesn't happen. But as far as I'm concerned, dragons are not asexual biologically. There are very few things in this world that are asexual bio biologically, and that's bacteria and a few select actual organisms that are... Eh. No. I mean, Godzilla was asexual, but... He was heavily that, mutated. Yeah, it was heavily mutated, uh, radiation caused that, also plot convenience. Yeah. Because if there was more than one, they'd have more movies than they already have. Yeah. It would make it too difficult, so they just kept it one, they make it asexual and pregnant, and nah. But dragons but, are not heavily mutated. No, 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 no. So... Let's just leave it at they avoided talking about it. Yeah. Even though I think that, if, again, if this whole series did get remade, they could go into, like, dragon courtship behavior. Perhaps. I mean, half, half the uh, vomiting fish and forcing you to eat it beyond having babies is kind of a mating ritual. I mean, when Toothless did it with Hiccup, that's a mating ritual. Um, or just like a friendship thing. Because sharing food. Well, you get into other animals, they yeah. throw up, and if they give you the throw up and they want you to eat it, it's a mating ritual. It's kind of like marking your territory, but like also trying to be romantic. Ah. Here, eat my vomit. It's good for you, and it makes us bonded. Um, but then again, Toothless didn't really know better. Makes the bond. Yeah, so... I'm 
seen that a lot with kid shows. They go in, in mo many kid shows I've seen in my childhood and with my younger sibling. They always, every time they introduce babies. Rugrats is the only one that actually had the uh, talk without having the talk. They just went through evolution while, um, what is her name, Tammy Pickles? gave birth something like that so they shot a scenes of evolution with that it was just that's how they had to talk without having the talk no one talked it was um biology lesson it was the timpani from um that movie that i'm suddenly drawing a blank on but dun 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 that and it was the evolution scene and a large orchestra So yeah, it's a good, it's a good short overall. By better than the previous, if you ask me, just a little mm -hmm. bit. Yeah, actually a lot technically. Uh, but yeah, it with a lot of kids shows they go they introduce baby, but. For some reason, our culture has something against going into the home. It's trying to preserve innocence, but we're not doing a good job at, with yeah. it. I mean, the internet kind of has ruined keeping innocence. So at this point in time, DreamWorks, we uh, applaud you for trying to keep the innocence as far as parents are concerned. But seriously, some of the kids that are watching this already know. Yeah, not to mention, they, they have whole nature documentaries with it. Yeah, nature, uh, I mean, I've National Geographic's down the hall that talk about it that I watched when I was four, so. Yeah. Then again, I couldn't understand what they were talking about. I was just like, oh, look at the kitty cats. But yeah, just have like a courtship dance in it. I mean, I, I could see Natters doing. Yeah, a Natters definitely dance. would have a courtship dance. Um, I could imagine a monstrous nightmares um, sparring. Like deer do. Mm -hmm. um, Gronkle. Mm. I hit you with my tail. Do you like it? Yeah, okay, we're a couple. <laughs> uh, Zipplebacks could probably have like the biggest explosion or something. Maybe. I don't I'm know. trying to imagine how four heads would react in a... Okay, I'm thinking dark, disturbing thoughts. <laughs> But, yeah. At least, I would like to see Natters doing, like, a courtship dance. Yeah. Some sparring between some monstrous nightmares. I imagine terrible terrors are just running free all the time and nobody cares. I mean, they're, they're kind of like cats slash dogs. I mean, could you imagine one of them just, just... doing the ch what chihuahuas do, just walks up and humps your leg? <laughs> that would be funny. Not now! <laughs> yeah. Uh, how do you think the other dragons that we've seen... What sort of courtships might they have? Um, oh, uh, flight mares. They could share their food. Because since that's like a precious resource to them. Yeah. Mm. Change wings would be interesting. Oh, yeah, like... Like a display of color. Yeah. Uh, we already know how um, bone nappers do, because they have a mating call. Yeah. But, um... Whispering death. We, we, we know what their eggs look like. They would probably do what worms do. Or snakes. Or snakes. And it's just all underground, so you never know what happened. But, um... Scaldron and Tyth... Uh, they would... Uh, uh, Thunder drums would probably do it like whales and other cetaceans. Yeah. It all happens underwater. And then, um... Typhoomerangs would be... Could you imagine spiraling typhoomerangs? With a mating dance? Yeah, that would, that would be pretty cool. They just spin on top. <laughs> continue spinning. 
That would be awesome. Oh, oh crap. Bewilderbeast. <laughs> SMASH! <laughs> Dear Lord. Oh, I know how Gronkles would. Hovers drops. <laughs> uh, oh, Red Death. That doesn't happen. Oh, they would be the ones that would eat the mate after. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Good point, yeah. Because the, the, the male would be significantly smaller for the yeah. Red Death. It would have to be. Yeah. So then she'd just eat him. Yeah. And as we've experienced, she was eating... Other dragons. Other dragons. So, and we already know it was a she. So, because they called her a queen. So, what about uh the um fireworms? That would be creepy with how many legs they have. It'd be like watching millipedes. They just crawl all over each other. That's gross. Yeah. Uh... I also think that, that with fireworms and the queen, it would probably be like a smaller male. It would have to be. Um, they're insect like in how many feet they have and how they build hives, so it would be a smaller male. Um, it would also potentially be one of her own babies. So, incest. Yeah. But. Are we missing any other dragons? I'm trying to keep all the ones out from Wraith to the Edge. Um. Speed stinger. They might do it something like bird. Definitely, yeah. Um, they might like build a nest. And, yeah. Of course, the alpha with his bright, flamboyant red crest and red marking would he, get his pick of female. Yeah, he, he would get first. Kind of like roosters. Mhm. Mm yeah, and he'd have most of the kids. Mhm. Mm um, and he'd make kids with his kids. Yeah, and drive off his son. Yeah. To keep the females, yeah. Um, night furries would be cute, because they'd want to cuddle. Mm -hmm. We've already witnessed that with how he uh, purrs and rubs. Um, I don't think there were any other dragons that we... Yeah. We've got them all. Yeah, and just in Riders and Defenders of Burke, I think that's yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Uh, we'll have to do a discussion like this with every new dragon we see, because that way we can, could explore the biology a bit more. Because I do enjoy learning about the biology of the dragon. Uh, we got to end this video soon. Yeah. <laughs> We're this is going, the longest. Yeah, this is actually the longest ever. Uh, what time is it? Uh, do you think we might want to do uh, Dawn of the Dragon Racer? Do you think we'd have enough time to do that? Yeah, as long as we keep our uh, re review short. short. Yeah. Uh, it's fairly short. No longer than this one. Uh, but until then, if you guys have anything uh, on Dragon Biology, put it down in the comments. Uh, bye.